Hey crafty friend, I'm Amanda with Pear Blossom Press and today I'm going to show you five different ways to use one big background stamp. Now as you're watching the video, ask yourself if you already have a stamp or maybe even a stencil in your collection that you can recreate uh, these same backgrounds with because um, wavy lines like this, these are really versatile. They allow you to create lots of different backgrounds without having to be perfect <laughs> and and they don't have to match up exactly so like I said as, as you're watching the video ask yourself if you already have something that'll work if not you can head on over to Trinity Stamps and check out the new wavy line stamp along with their whole big birthday release they have a fantastic new release because they're celebrating their fifth anniversary so this is the wavy lines background stamp now you'll notice it's big it's like five and a half by five and a half and it, it comes with a separate sticker that you can put on the acetate. I haven't done that on there. When I use big stamps like this, for my Misty, I like to put a sticky grid inside. That's gonna help hold my paper down, and then that way I don't need to put a magnet on my sheet of paper that I'm stamping, because the stamp is larger than most of the panels that I'll be stamping. So when I stick it into the Misty, notice that I've got the paper not just down in the corner because I want my stamp to overlap it all the way around. And when I stick my stamp into the Misty and pick it up with a lid, I want to make sure to get out as many air bubbles underneath as possible. Whenever you're working with a big stamp like that, try to get out all the air bubbles. And then I'm doing a little bit of cleaning because this is the first time I've ever used the stamp so I want to just kind of clean it up make sure that um, it's kind of preconditioned so that the ink won't bubble up on there um, if there's any of the oils or anything left from the factory and then I've gone ahead and inked it up and for this one I'm gonna just ink up the whole background using the the entire stamp kind of the I guess the original way it's designed to be used, <laughs> using it completely. And I'm just stamping tone on tone here. And you'll notice because it is the first time I'm using it, it's not fully conditioned. I could, I could have taken like my eraser to it or something, but I just ink it up a couple times. Because I am using the Misty, I can go over it three or four times. This does it conditions for me as I go and then whenever you are inking up a big stamp like that try to let the the ink kind of just sit like let the lid stay closed for a second or two extra so that the ink can absorb into the paper so we've done the first one where we did it solid and now for the next technique I'm actually just going to partially ink up the stamp and then I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water. This is going to give us just a little bit of a wavy background and it kind of moves some of that ink around. It'll be a little watercolor-ish sort of but it definitely an imperfect background which will lend itself nicely to the finished card. For our third technique notice that my card this is actually a full card base here it's taller it's a mini slim line so I think it's six and a quarter inches tall and remember that stamp is only five and a half inches tall so we're gonna have to extend the stamp a little bit not a problem I'll show you how to do that and because that's a card base the whole card I needed to put a little bit of double stick tape or I just rolled over a piece of tape to hold my card closed so that it wouldn't shift around on me and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ink up a rainbow instead of just having those waves be waves they're going to be a rainbow of different colors just kind of like a just a wavy background but all different colors so I spread ink just kind of rubbed it across the first couple lines down at the bottom and then I inked up my card then I cleaned off the stamp and now I inked up with the second color and I missed a few spots near the edge. I'm not worried about the middle because the middle will be covered for this card. But for the edges, I wanted to get coverage all the way out to the ends. And then I just kind of went in rainbow order all the way up to the card. And you'll notice as I get to the top here, I've got more card than stamp. <laughs> it's not a problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, stamp up the last line there. Then I'll pull the card base out 
and I can flip it around. I do want to make sure that I'm cleaning as I go so that I don't get any stray ink um, onto my fingers that would then end up all over the card itself. And remember I said those wavy lines, they're imperfect. This is not like, if, if you had straight lines, you would definitely notice if they were not 100% spaced out correctly. But because these are wavy and they're just a, a little whimsical, they lend themselves to stamping all over the place without any issues. So I just made sure that I'm, I'm not going to overlap that pink line there. And then I can go ahead and stamp a couple more. And you see it looks like it just kind of like that's the way it's supposed to be. And now I do want to continue the next color um, just to get coverage all the way to the edge of the card. And I'm inked up way more than I need on the stamp, which is not a problem. And you see we can just go ahead and get full coverage there so that the rainbow goes all the way top to bottom for this card. And I think that's a fun background. Okay, so we've been working with the stripes um, horizontally. Let's work vertically now. So I've got a full slimline panel here. And I'm just going to line it up. And again, we're going to have the same issue where it's the panel is longer than the stamp, but that's fine. So I'll go ahead and rotate the stamp, pick it up. And again, we want to get any air bubbles out or at least as much as possible. You can have a couple. It's not a big deal. But if you have big bubbles in there, it's going to affect the way your image stamps. And then now I'm just going to ink it up with some yellow ink. And in this case, I don't want really solid coverage here. So I'm going to mist it with a little bit of water and I'm going to lightly pick up some of that ink here and there. Because what I want to create are like streamers in the background. And I'm giving the, the, the misty a little a chance with the lid closed for the ink to just absorb into the paper there. And then I can go ahead and lift this panel up, flip it around. and just line it up. I did clean that stamp in between here too. And then I'll just ink it up one more time. And I'm gonna mist it again, pick up some of that ink. And then I'm gonna go ahead and shift the panel just a smidge so that those lines basically line up. They are not gonna be perfect. You will definitely see that seam when I lift the lid here, but my plan for the finished card covers that up. You won't notice it at all. I'll show you in the end. And then we've got one more, one more to go here. And now not everybody's gonna be on board with this and that's okay, it's not for the faint of heart because we're gonna do some stamp surgery. I'm just trimming off one of the wavy lines here. Don't be afraid to do this, it's okay. But if it's not for you, that's okay too. <laughs> Uh, so I've just got the one wave here and I'm going to put my panel back into the misty or a new panel into the misty and now I'm just going to kind of curve that one little wave and I can pick it up. What I want is to create streamers. I'm, I'm going to build a party scene with this one. So I'm just going to ink up just that one wavy line. He's curved and then I can go ahead and ink the panel and then I can clean it up and move it around and I can do this a couple times. And I do, like I said, try to clean up in between. It makes life easier. And when you pick it up, as long as you get the top and the bottom, you can always adjust the curve. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'll just ink up a couple more streamers onto my background here. And then we can put our stamp back together. And I just want to show you the cut edge at the top there and the cut edge at the bottom of that wave. They will line back up perfectly. So you can do this in your Misty or, or just on the acetate there. But when you do that in your Misty and stamp it again, it'll stamp like it's one complete stamp again. So I'm never afraid of stamp surgery, but I know that 
some people are. <laughs> so let's take a look at our panels here and then I'm gonna turn them into cards for you. The first one that we did where it was solid tone on tone, I added a little mermaid with the action wobble. The second one where it was kind of that watercolor, just partial stamping, I added another mermaid there, turned her into a little party scene. Here's our rainbow background. I added a rainbow snake. And then this one is our slim line. Remember I said that you wouldn't be able to tell where that line is, can you? Can you see it? <laughs> I hid it underneath the cupcake. I did put some vellum over that panel. And then our last one where I did some stamp surgery, I added some 3D banners to go along with it and made another little light up card there. So thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget we are celebrating Trinity Stamp's fifth birthday. So be sure to head on over there and check out all of the fun new release. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, my friends, thanks for watching.